Hey, this is Lorraine from Sew the Land, and I'm back with another video, another how-to video. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how we make our own sauerkraut. We've been making sauerkraut since we actually started reading this book years ago, I think since Penelope's been born. This is a fantastic book. I talk about it many, many times in our videos. If you don't own it, please get this book read it cover to cover, which I did. Once I started it, I couldn't put it down. Nourishing, nourishing foods and why you need them in your body. Also talks about why you need sauerkraut. So I'm gonna leave that up to you to get that. Um, that was the basic recipe that we started with. And then since then, we've just been adding our own ingredients to our sauerkraut and just changing the palate, changing the flavor and which is so fantastic, which you can do. And another reason why I like sauerkraut, uh, this recipe is because it really doesn't have like measuring, uh, like a, a measure, like you don't have to measure. You kind of just add in a head of lettuce and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and then it all works out. So there's no real recipe. You just kind of want to know how it works. I'm just going to throw in a bunch of things we're gonna be using organic ingredients. So we're gonna be using organic cabbage. Um, a friend of ours last year in the summertime gave us a giant root of ginger root. And it was this thing was like the whole plant. And so what we did to preserve it is we uh, have these little sh food saver shrink wrap bags and we froze them in little individual portions. Uh, we're gonna be using an Anaheim chili Feel free to use anything in your recipe. You can use jalapenos. If you don't like spice, you could just use bell peppers. We're gonna use an Anaheim chili because we like medium spice. We're also going to use a whole head of garlic. The whole head. So you'll want to, ahead of time, like peel them and then get them ready. We're also going to use onion. I like yellow onions, but feel free to use, this is your recipe, whatever you like to taste. If you like sweet onions, if you like red onions, we like yellow onions, so, and that's what we have on hand, so we're gonna use that. It's important that you get really good salt for this recipe. You don't wanna use like table iodized salt. That's not gonna work. We use sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, and that, that works really well. And our last special secret ingredient that we're going to add is curry powder. It's gonna be so good. So the first thing you're gonna need to do after you've washed your head of lettuce and your pepper, um, you're going to need to save the outer leaves. So just make sure they're washed and you're gonna to wanna to save the outer leaves. You'll probably need about two or three. So I'm just gonna place them here and just save like about two or three leaves and I'll show you what this is for at the very end. Try and keep them whole. Like if they just shred like this, you can compost it or feed it to the chickens. Now you're just going to slice your cabbage in half. You'll want a whole head of cabbage to work with. And then next you're going to just slice it into thin little ribbons. And you might be wondering, can I just stick this in the food processor and shred this? You can, however, keep in mind when you do that, you are going to make the fermenting time speed up a whole lot. So when you chop these vegetables by hand, you're going to keep a lot of the moisture all together and then and the fermenting time will take about five days but when you shred it in the food processor you're already breaking down a lot of those uh, vegetable enzymes already for you so it takes away from the fermenting time so next i'm just going to cut this crossways so that way they're bite-sized pieces so we're going to need our stock pot for this and you're just gonna take your cabbage, just dump it right into the pot. So next, we're just going to chop the rest of our ingredients into little tiny pieces, however you feel that you would enjoy them in your mouth. So for the ginger, that's gonna be really tiny. I don't think I would like to bite down on a really large piece of ginger. You can actually grate this ginger 
But for this one, I think I'm just gonna chop it into little tiny pieces. There's almost no measurement for this recipe. You can add as much ginger or other ingredients as you like. I'm just adding in one knob of ginger, but you can add more if you really like it. Now let's get these garlic cloves chopped up. Now remember what I said, you just want to make sure that they are bite size friendly. So when you bite into this, are you gonna wanna bite into a half of a garlic clove? I don't know, it's up to you. I like them pretty small, so I'm gonna chop these up really small. Okay, so our garlic is in. Let's chop up this Anaheim chili. I'm gonna cut out the seeds for this chili just because a little might be a little too spicy for me. <laughs> Not for Jason. I like the spice. I know. <laughs> oh. So a little bit of seeds are just fine, but the whole bunch of them might be a little bit too much. And dump them in the pot. Okay, the last, or actually we're down to two more ingredients to go, and this is our yellow onion. Sauerkraut is a condiment. It is really not a dish or a side dish, even though some members of our family like to eat it that way. Um, it's just meant to put on top of your food. All right, I'm gonna take over because Lorraine is crying with the onions. <laughs> so we're gonna chop these more finer than this? Yes. Okay, that looks good. It's good? Yeah. Now throw it in the pot? Yep, throw it in the pot. All right. That onion was so powerful and strong, but I just want to point that out, that our food is so powerful and strong and it's a living food and that it has power to, to make you cry and make you healthy. So we're putting that in here. <laughs> Anyhow, the next thing that we're gonna put into our pot is curry powder. You can totally leave this out. This is what our family likes. It gives it a really nice flavor. I've got some organic curry powder and I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon. Should we put more in, Penelope? Um, maybe like half a tablespoon more. All right, just a half. What are you wearing, Penelope? Cabbage hat? <laughs> okay. So we've got our curry powder in. This is gonna be great with the ginger. Okay, so the last ingredient, and the most important ingredient, is our sea salt. My rule of thumb is about two tablespoons per head of cabbage and ours was a large um, head of cabbage so I'm just gonna be very generous with my two tablespoons, heaping tablespoons. Next thing we're gonna do is stir it around, give it a good stir. I wanna get the salt touching all of the ingredients here in the pot. And what the salt is going to do, the salt is going to draw out all of the liquids that each of the ingredients are holding on to. For this part, there really is no rush to get it into the mason jar. If you wanted to let your vegetables sweat it out, you can feel free to set this pot aside, go take a break, go cook a meal, clean your house, whatever you gotta do. Um, I've done that before and then have, and then have come back to find that, um, that our vegetables have sweated it out and we, we don't have to do as much pounding. All right, so the next step that you're gonna wanna do is pound out and help release some of the juices. It helps break up some of the structure of the plant and release the juices. Kind of like similar to what your mouth does when you chew and you break down and release all of the good enzymes part of the plant. This is a really good uh, step for children if they want to get in there and help this is great for them they love doing it so you just want to pound out the vegetables down to the bottom of the pot for pounding out your sauerkraut feel free to use a kraut pounder what I have here is an old rolling pin um, you can use the back of a wooden spoon or just something flat and that would mash it up and those all those things would work just fine we're starting to see that there is a little bit of juice on the bottom of the pot and that is from pounding it out and that is from also the salt is bringing out all of the moisture but it's not quite 
enough what we want. We want this brine to sit above our vegetables in the mason jar. So when we put it into the mason jar, we're going to have all our vegetables and then we kind of want that brine to sit above it and that'll keep mold from growing. So we want a little bit more, I want to see a little bit more in the pot. So we're going to keep on pounding. In the summertime, what we like doing is taking some green tomatoes that have fallen off the vine, uh, the tomato vine, and using them to make sauerkraut as well as cabbage. And we can sometimes throw in some yellow squash, some zucchini, all of that makes for fantastic sauerkraut. Now we can tell that we have enough brine at the bottom because we can see little pools of brine pulling up in the little pocket areas. So we're going to get a funnel and a large mason jar and then we're just going to scoop it right into our jar. A quick note about the sauerkraut or your ingredients is they should always be fresh. When you use old ingredients, they tend to be a lot drier and they don't have a whole lot of moisture in them as fresher ingredients do. Things that don't have a whole lot of moisture in them are things like beets and carrots. I have made the same recipe with shredded carrots, maybe like two shredded carrots, but that's not the main ingredient. Like the main ingredients are going to have a lot of moisture in them like a head of cabbage. Okay, and then you're gonna take your kraut pounder or your spoon, you can take a spoon too, and then just push it all the way down. And then you're gonna keep filling your jar. You wanna release all of the air bubbles that are in here. So you don't want air because air is gonna create mold. So you don't want any air in your jar. And you can see the brine is starting to pull up over the vegetables and just keep filling. Okay, so this jar is full. Looks like we need another jar for the rest of the ingredients here. But you're gonna use your kraut pounder and you're gonna smash everything down as hard as you can so that way all of the air is released. Remember our cabbage leaf that we saved. It's very important that you save your cabbage leaves. If, if you for some reason forget, you can use a weight, like some people use a glass weight or a rock in a Ziploc bag. I've never used the rock in a Ziploc bag, but I do have some glass weights and I'll use one in this jar and then I'll use um, the cabbage leaf in another jar just to show you. So we're going to cut the cabbage leaf about the size of this jar and just make sure it's a clean cabbage leaf. And we're going to push it down. I like two of them. Push it down under, and this is going to help keep all those little tiny bits and pieces submerged under the brine. So if, if there is any mold that grows, it's going to grow on our cabbage leaf here, and then we can just toss that cabbage leaf, and the rest of the sauerkraut is just fine. Okay, you're going to place a mason jar lid. You're going to screw it not very tight. You're just going to screw it uh, where it's easy, you can rock the lid back and forth, and then you're gonna set it somewhere in your home where you can see it and remember it. It's going to start releasing little air bubbles as it digests uh, up to the top, and then you're gonna wanna burp your jar, especially if you see this little metal lid that it's kind of bowed outwards, you're gonna wanna burp your jar, which and that means just turn it this way. You don't wanna open it because once you start opening it, you're gonna expose all of this to air and then you could get more mold. I never open it. So I'm gonna set this out for five days, burp it maybe once or twice a day or just anytime I walk by it, just kind of just twist the lid and if you can hear the air release. And let's get another jar going so I can show you how we use our glass weights. Okay, so this one, we have our glass weight, it's clean, and this one just happens to fit right in here. And we're just gonna push it down and let the brine come up over the glass weight. I also have these burping lids, and they are specifically for fermentation. You can find them on Amazon, I'll put the link to them right below in the description box, as well as the glass weights. This goes here, 
put our lid back on. Now the purpose of this, it has a little hole here and it allows the jar to burp itself. And so we don't have to walk by and burp the jar like the other one. Now I've tried this both ways. I like them both. I still prefer sometimes the old school method just because that's what I started out with and I've been doing it for years, but I still, when I'm running out of lettuce leaves, I can still use this one or when I'm running out of weights, I can still use the cabbage leaves. One last thing that I forgot to add is also very important is I always keep a little thing of scotch tape in my kitchen and I like to label everything because I am so forgetful and I don't remember when I start things or what's in the jar. So I will label it and write sauerkraut ready in five days and then today's date. So like I said, this is gonna sit on your countertop for about five days. If it's cold, like really cold in your house and it's the winter time, we're gonna let it set out for a, just a little bit longer, like maybe six days or maybe seven days. I'll wanna just check it. You can check it at any point. And really it's not, this is, this is food, this is whole food. It's all living, it's not gonna be bad. It will go from, right now it's really salty, but it'll go from salty to more of a tangy uh, flavor. So that's what you're gonna be looking for is more of like this fermented tangy flavor. If you do see a little bit of mold on the top, you can just scoop it right out and put it in the garbage and the rest of your product is just fine. If you do see like strains of pink mold you'll wanna to toss the whole thing, but that rarely, rarely happens because we put sea salt in our product and the sea salt is what keeps the bad bacteria from growing and all of the good bacteria in here and into our tummies. Now, after you have opened your jars after five days and you feel like the flavor is just right for you, and you're ready to eat it, you're gonna to wanna to put it in your refrigerator because of the cold temperature is gonna stop the fermentation process, keep it crisp and fresh and crunchy and everything will taste really good. I am Lorraine from Sow the Land and I wanna thank you for joining me in, to, in my kitchen when we made sauerkraut today. So thanks and have a great day.